So hi, thank you for joining me. Um, we wanted to do another live Q&A just to create more space for people to come along and ask questions and just have a conversation. Yeah, just to have a conversation around um, psychic development and what intuitive you can do for you. Um, hey, Tom, I know Tom's already, <laughs> Tom's already ready to go, signed up, ready for intuitive you, so that's amazing. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions on either the topic or what's included, or if there's something specific for you that, you know, you really struggle with in regards to your intuition, um, and how does that fit into the piece? Um, yeah, I just wanted to open it up so that we can, yeah, <laughs> we can have, um, more of a conversation around that. And, um, there's so, like, I've been doing some research, like there's so many options. There's so many different things that we can be doing or, or plugging into out there in regards to opening up and developing our intuitive abilities. And so I think, and for me, it's always been really important to find the right connection and the right space, um, the right alignment in energy for you to, um, yeah, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. <laughs> Crystal signed up as well. That's awesome. So we've got some students here, which is really great to see. Um, yeah, you want to make sure that the connection is right, the alignment is right, um, that it's the right teacher for you, all those things. They're really important in you allowing yourself to open up and receive to create that space of vulnerability and trust in a course. So, um, yeah, I might just open it up right now Um if there's anything, any burning questions, anything, you know, you've really got something that you sort of want to put on the table for discussion, um, I sort of invite you to, you can either, un, like, you can put your hand up um, to comment in unmute or you can write a message. What can I share? I, I personally, uh, and it's really been on my radar, like the content of this class and how it can help and benefit people. And I literally, I am using my intuition, intuition every single day, always. Um, and I've got a group of friends where we will be like, can you check this for me? And we all check things for each other because quite often when we're checking for ourselves, we are very attached to the outcome or we're very emotionally invested in our life and the people and the situation. So we can sometimes lack clarity or we have our blind spots or our ego can get in the way, all the things that we have um, that can really influence or interfere with what we're receiving. Um, Sarah, can you check this for me? Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> and I am lucky to have a few people that I can do that to as well. It is genuinely a lifesaver. But the reason I say that it is because it helps you to show up and navigate life um, not one step ahead of the game, but I guess that is what it does, but it allows you to be fully informed of all the pieces of the puzzle and all the players of the game. And you just have a different level of awareness and you can choose how you want to show up a little bit differently instead of being very reactive to life and just getting hit in the face with something unexpected. Mind you, that will still happen when the divine doesn't want you to know something. You will not know. <laughs> it will not come through. Um, but, yeah, on a daily basis and also when we navigate stressful situations and challenging situations or people, um, your intuition is, gosh, just such a huge asset. And if you are able to really bring your energy into alignment to surround yourself with other people who can sort of um, vibe with you in that way, it's a, a massive support. So um, I literally, yeah, I use... I use my intuition every day, always. Um, and I got really good at neutralizing myself. So my ability to read has improved. My ability to read for myself, I should say, has improved a lot. Um, and sometimes I can pick up on things that other people just can't see. So um, it can be done. You can read for yourself in that way um, once you can become really detached and neutral. And that doesn't mean to say that I'm in that state all the time, no way, but it, it can. I can do it and it, and it um, can sometimes happen quite naturally and other times it takes real effort, um, but that's okay too. So cool, we've got some things happening on the side in the chat off. The record, congrats on, congrats on the website. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Another labour of love. Um, what else have we got? Were you intuitive with 
um, open clairs earlier in your life before or did you have to learn to do that as what will you be teaching us? Um, yes, there, yes, there was um, aspects of my um, intuition and, and psychic abilities that were strong as a child, but um, I got quite scared by it, to be honest, um, and I just shut it down and I shut it down hard. <laughs> so that created that real sense of separation and I wasn't following my path I wasn't honoring what I wanted or needed I was quite disconnected from who I was um because because this is more the truth of who I am like my intuitive abilities is a huge part of who I am um and, and that is everybody I want to say like your your intuition is it's almost like that core piece of your whole being in how you show up and navigate life you every decision you make like we're balls of energy so when we're unaware or unconscious to the truth of who we are and the energy that we're involved with or mixing with or influenced by, um, we're sort of at the mercy of, you know, you're in this big ocean and you're just getting thrashed about and pushed and pulled and you're sort of moving with the crowd wherever the crowd is going. Whereas when you align to the truth of who you are, you can you have a, a much clearer sense of yourself and the energy around you and you have the space and the capacity to go, well, is this right for me? Is this what I want? Is this who I am? And navigate your choices that way. So it doesn't matter what the crowd is doing. You go that way and that's right for you. And everyone around you will be going, what are you doing? But you're like, no, this is my truth. This feels right. So, um, yeah. So when it comes to my, in, my psychic and intuitive abilities as a child, um, they were always there and I doubled in it a little bit more as a teenager, but again, I freaked myself out <laughs> a lot. I saw some, I had some really intense, very confronting experiences, very like real world, like, um, yeah, some very tangible experiences that um, were well beyond me. They were big, loud knocks from another dimension, time and space. And it, it again, it just scared the crap out of me. So I shut it down. <laughs> so there was a lot. I piled on a lot of, um, there was a lot of fear and there was a lot of shutdown because I wasn't, I, I didn't know how to trust myself. I didn't know. Um, I'd never, that, that sort of space was never really encouraged because it was just um, woo-woo, basically. Um, so it wasn't safe to explore and it wasn't a real part of life um I was sort of raised Catholic um private private, private schools Catholic education I would and I knew even going to a Catholic school <laughs> I was like having mass trauma triggered <laughs> from church it was so ugh, it just felt so gross and that was the only piece of spirituality that I had been exposed to um and it felt so wrong so that was another part of that oh well, that that's wrong do you know what I mean like because I instinctively knew like I could feel that this something wasn't right but that was what was sort of being conditioned as to this is spirituality and I was like no no this is all no and so uh, then that was what made me just go like this on all levels like it was just too much and I didn't have the capacity to process um or understand what I was experiencing so um yeah I, I it took me a lot what I felt was a long time to figure out my truth and get on my path and that meant a lot of um deep diving through the ick and all the hard feelings and you know I got to a point where I was deeply deeply unhappy in my life because I was so disconnected from my truth and I had no idea who I was and I was very much like even more so the round peg in a square hole, like this just wasn't working. And I was by no means suicidal, but I really was like there has got to be more to life than this. What, what the F is this? So I I had to start exploring. I had to start um, and I didn't know where to go. I, I think I started, I initially had a couple of sessions with a psychologist and I went and had a Reiki session. <laughs> Two things I'd never done before, but I didn't know what else to do. Um, and, and that started it. Like I, with the psychologist, I sort of got a bit of clarity on making some really hard choices. And then that felt complete. I didn't need to keep doing that. And again, so that was just, 
I was just starting to show up going, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? And it was just like, okay, I'm doing this. Okay. Now I'm doing this. So um, I did a couple of sessions with a psychologist and then that was it. And then I did a session with um, a Reiki woman who my experience in that one session was phenomenal. And it literally just opened up this whole world that I'd been denying basically. And um, saw things and felt things. And I just went, what the hell was that? And I literally just went home and recreated the experience. Like I didn't know what Reiki was and I didn't know what she was doing, but I went home that night and I deepened my breath. Like I really leaned into my breath. I repeated the pattern that she'd given me um, and I relaxed my body and I put on like the meditation music and I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, and I had more of these amazing experiences and I, but that actually at that point, I also started seeing some really confronting stuff again, but by that stage, I was sort of late twenties and I had more, um, emotional maturity and capacity to see something confronting and go, Oh, what, what's that? And it wasn't nice. Like they really were like, I was seeing entities and demonic beings and there was a woman with a gun in her mouth and like all this horrific stuff. And I just was like. I don't want to see any of this, but it's sort of like when you start to open yourself up and you can start to see things and you, your energy is sort of where it's at, you see everything on that level, if that makes sense. So you're seeing lots of different things of a lower vibration and a high vibration. You, you sort of get everything. And the more work you do on yourself, the more you clear yourself, the more you become aware of your energetic hygiene as well as your mental and emotional body and your physical body, the more you can clear that up and heal the wounding, like really raising your vibration, you come out of that dross. Like I still see stuff, of course, like I'll still see demonic beings and entities and tons of scary things, but my relationship to that energetic exchange is completely different. I'm holding space in a much different way now. So, and I'm seeing it for a different reason. I'm not seeing it because I'm just sort of going, oh, what's in there? Oh, scary monster. I'm going, I'm looking for the scary monsters now to get them out. So, the reason why I see them and how I see them is, is a completely different exchange. So just putting that out there on your radar so that if you do see some confronting things, one, it's perfectly normal, you are safe and how you choose to show up in that exchange is going to be really impactful into what happens. Um, I guess I didn't really do anything with it at the time. I just observed and that is, and that's one of the things we're talking about um, in intuitive view is to really sort of when you neutralize yourself, there is no judgment. There's no expectation. You're just witnessing. And that is how you can learn to read energy with more clarity because you're not projecting onto what you're seeing. So being aware of your ego, coming into it with a heart, with an open heart, a big heart, and like really activating your heart energy. Um, we, we talk about all of that as well. Sorry. So I've just gone on a little, uh, tangent there. I'm just going to check the chat and see if anyone else is. Um, what have we got here? I used to get beltings and told not to lie about things I thought I saw and knew. Yeah, that's tough. Um, and I think even if, it, like, I mean, that's quite traumatic. So I'm really sorry that that happened to you because it is a very natural part of you. But you know, you're dealing with a lot of fear that's come before you and the innocence of the child is just sharing what they see. So, um, and it's, it can sometimes not even need to be that traumatic too. It's just, it's an attitude or the, the cultural conditioning that comes in again. I had the woo-woo, that's all woo-woo. So that's silly. That's, um, you know, dreamland. I got told I lived in dreamland. Um, all of that can be, you know, really crushing as well to the person who's like, well, that's my reality. <laughs> so it's very invalidating at, at any age. So learning to trust, trust yourself, trust the connection, that takes a lot of courage and strength. And you can't force that in anyone, like when, particularly, like when you're looking at yourself and going, oh, why haven't my gifts come on and I want them? It's like it's, it's really about how to navigate inwards um, within yourself, and loving yourself and being okay with all the hard stuff and doing the healing work. And I know that's that's not a fancy, sexy way of getting into intuitive development, but that's actually the truth. Everyone has this. 
So some people do incarnate naturally with some of their gifts, like fully on 100%, <laughs> you know, they've come in and they're highly, highly psyche or, you know, they can remember all of their past lives and how fascinating and that's amazing and go you and, you know, who's to say we haven't had an experience where we did that because that is going to be serving us in some way for this particular lifetime. But in general, where it's the healing process that needs to come through that allows us to come back into our natural and powerful state. So, and with that, with that clarity, um, the confidence, the courage. So it's everything that we've ever been through that's piling on top of that that keeps us closed off. Um, and and also the doubt. I do want to highlight the doubt that can come in um, that contributes to the lack of um, inner, inner trust. Um, what else have we got? <clears throat> so how did you learn to open back up? Crystal Scott, oh my God, I so understand. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's actually, you know, that's it's a it's a narrative that a lot of people understand because we're really in general, you come to Earth school, you are not you are not cultivated, you are not nurtured to come back into your truth, your wholeness. You are conditioned to fit into the system. So um, the system doesn't care your uniqueness and, you know, your superpowers. <laughs> it's like get in, go to school, get a job, get married, have kids, get off. So, um, yeah, you, it, it is it is hard. Um, it's When I say it's hard, it's like having the courage to, to um, go against what you've been programmed into pretty much. It's having the courage to go yeah, I'm going to go in this direction and really back yourself in that direction. And then it's the, and then it's the piece of showing up and doing the working through the fee and working through all the ways that we shut those parts of ourselves down. Meditation, when you're asking how did I open it up, actually meditation was one of the main things, learning how to meditate and, um, and coming into myself and the quietening so I used meditation then to really quieten my mind and that in and of its own was a whole other journey because I had the monkey mind. I had the, I would go to bed and the thoughts would just keep going around and around and around or I'd replay conversations or I'd literally have the same sentence rolling around and around and it would drive me insane. I was like, how do I stop this? I had no idea that happened. That just happened. That was just, you know, very unregulated, um, overloaded mental body, um, jammed up emotional body, all the normal things. When I say normal, that's just pretty much how everyone's responding to life unless you, you really become aware of yourself and do the healing work and come into your own. So meditation is one of the most key pieces in coming back into myself and carving out it's like you want to when I say carving out a path it's like chopping off all the overgrown branches all the stuff that's just gone like this cutting all of that back that's meditation or oh, that's what it did for me um guided meditation is the the what I give most clients straight away because it keeps your mind engaged it keeps you focused on something um it basically holds your hand through the process so I did that for a long time, actually. I just did guided meditations and my guided meditations were very much about the healing. So it was feeling into my emotions in the meditation and doing things to learn how to release them. So, I mean, that was one of the first places I learned how to use flame, like flame work. I just call it flame work. I used that in the meditation and allowing all of those hard feelings to come up. And then I would use the violet flame or, um, you know, I'd call in Kuan Yin and the violet flame and I'd just dump everything. And, you know, this was out, anyone teaching me, this was just me following a guided meditation. <laughs> so there's so many resources out there. Um, there literally is so many resources out there. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's finding what's right for you um, that allows you to really open up into that space. So, um, yeah, and I, did, I know I just sort of potted along. I mean, I did a lot of healing work. I think I've shared this before. I did a lot of healing work on myself, just working on myself for a good five years before I did any modality. So, and I feel really blessed actually about that because it actually put me in a really good position to then go into learning about energy and energy healing and how to really create shifts because I felt really confident. Like I know this stuff works. I, I literally am li living, breathing. I'm the embodiment of when you do the work, change happens. 
So um, that really motivated me to then learn more, like to delve more into the energy body and healing on an energetic level. Um, and I had no intention of doing that for anyone other than myself. I just became almost obsessed with my own healing journey um, because it also really triggered the whole everybody and everything that has ever contributed to this mess needs to get the F out. Like I was just hell bent on coming back into my own. Like if I'm going to be here and I'm going to be me, then I'm going to be me without anyone else's input, like pushing into my energy, the conditioning, the programming, the coding, all of it. I was like, everything needs to get out. <laughs> and the truth is like the, the truth of our being is that it's just, it's, you are a being of divinity. And so that's the only frequency I really wanted to embody. And that's what I'm I'm still, you know, living and breathing every day, working towards like that. I don't think that journey ever really ends. So, um, yeah, so that was sort of um, what I did in the beginning to really get cracking with opening that up and feeling safe, feeling safe in that process as well. Um, what else have I got here? So we've got Jan here. I left home one year after my father died. I was almost 17, never went back home to live. I followed my heart. Um, I did not know what that was. I did not know that I was guided through my whole life. I'm now 76. I love the education my life path has taken me here. And now with access to education for the last years, my dogs have been no savers yet beautiful. I was told my imagination would run away with me. I did not know what, who imagination was. Yeah. Yeah. And look, it's, you know, you sort of, as a child, you're really at the mercy of the the caretakers that are around you. Um, that is part of the game, you know, um, the game of life. When we come here, we are at the mercy of the beings that we're surrounded by as, as children that create the foundation that sets us up for the healing journey for the rest of our lives. So it's fine. It's it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's it's okay that that was our experience. But then when we get to a point like and that, it is the soul coming through. It's the soul trying to pierce through the ego, going. But what are you going to do about it? Like, but is this okay? Like, there's just this. Um, it's like it's like that energy. It's like the. No, something's not right. <laughs> this isn't right. So that needs to come through and that can actually be that can be a really long time that it sits in the background and it can sit there for many years until you're really ready to go okay I'm, I'm going to follow it I'm I've I'm so sick of sitting in my shit that I want to create change and I still don't know what that looks like but I'm going to explore it and this is how the divine works like as soon as you open up and go oh the first thing that you see just follow that and then the next thing, it's just like breadcrumbs. It'll just keep opening up and opening up. And and my motto from day one has always been just take what's right for you and leave the rest. Um, so, and that's with that applies for everything because not everything is going to work for everybody and it's not meant to. Your energy is going to vibrate in whatever way you're showing up. And you, if you're experiencing something it's it's giving you something so take what is right and then just leave the rest and in my experience sometimes the beat the pieces that I've left I've circled back around and maybe five ten years later that's when I was ready to receive that piece or it needed to sort of percolate in my consciousness before it was ready to really drop in on a deeper level so again there's no right or wrong it's just a very natural process that needs to unfold but I think the key piece is that we're showing up and willing to explore and looking at ourselves and exploring it. It's the self-exploration um, that fuels the, the, the spiritual journey and the openness and, or opening up into our truth and our intuitive and psychic abilities. And through that, like that's when we can really get into that lane of thriving, when we come into alignment with the truth of who we are and our capacity to read feel receive information and process it and do something with it like that's real empowerment and you're accessing another level of truth that other people just either will do instinctively because everyone has that instinctive connection or they're just um you know denying that part of themselves and again there's no right or wrong in that that's where they're at and that's where we were until we chose to sort of um pay attention so, and like I said, you can't rush that. That's, um, okay, so 
I know as part of the course, we can do 30 minute session with you. Would you recommend to do the session with you before or after the class? Um, there's no right or wrong. That's really a personal thing. If you've got stuff that um, you want to really address prior to going into the course because you don't want that to hold you back, then by all means, you can use it now. Um, it was, I, I put it in there because a lot of people can get really triggered when they work through stuff. So in the course, when things sort of come up and then you're like, oh, or something triggers you within the, in the course or some of the content or whatever it is, or there's a part of you that's sort of um, getting caught on something, um, that was sort of why I put it in there. But you could go through the whole course and then do it. Like once you're out, you've finished the course and you're playing with all your tools and it's a couple of months later and you're like, okay, now I need help. Now that I'm not in the course container, I need to actually check in with this again. So it's it's really your intuition. Use your intuition. Trust your gut. If you really want to, because the other, the other point of view is I want to get the most out of this course as much as possible. What can I do to either get ready for the course or how do I show up in this course that allows me to get the most out of it? Um, you can do it that way as well. If you know you've got certain limitations or blocks within your psychic and intuitive abilities that you really just want to try and get out of the way as much as possible um, or interferences, you just want to like a big clean out um, prior to going into the course so that you're more open and receptive. That's another a great idea as well. So it's it's up to you. It's your, your choice on when you want to use that. Um, you, I think you were given a code. So there's a code that you just... Um, apply when you purchase the 30 minute session and i think that was a 30 30 percent discount for that one um <coughs> we've got for each module thanks cynthia for each module sarah does a group clearing related to the module topic very powerful yeah and actually what was really interesting so cynthia did the first one that i did and then she's done the recordings for i don't know if i've done one or two since then um and she was like oh the clearings are different <laughs> And they will be because the energy is different for each group. So it's very much about the people that have really chosen to come together for this particular class. Um, the clearings are, are tailored to your group energy. So, um, I mean, the group clearings or um, yeah, group, group clearings are amazing, amazing. When it comes to the divinity that comes in and shifts stuff is just it's next level. It really is truly amazing. <laughs> so, um, and I love that about intuitive view because again, in the research that I've done for other courses and what there's, what's available, um, sure. They give you some techniques and tools and we do all of that in intuitive view, but that actual clearing piece isn't there generally. Um, and and it's such an important part. It is, you know, anyone can learn how to use a tool or a, or a technique, but if you're jammed up with all your stuff in there, it's going to take 10 times longer or 10 times harder to make that work. So when you get all of the dross out of the way, it just sort of opens up the road to then go into the practice and it can happen more naturally with more ease and grace, um, more fluently and um, yeah. So it's, I think it's a really important piece. Um, Tom Crystal, I asked that question in the say support and decided to do that. Um, I had my first session with Michael today and doing another week next week. So, um, um, something of stuff clear today. Energy interferences and what's still more to do. Excited for how this will open me up. Yeah, and that's perfect. Um, really, like I love that. So that's really taking responsibility for. Um, what you're holding and just getting it out, just get, <laughs> just get it out. You know, you like this, and um, and it just creates space. And then you bring in more of your truth. And what's your truth? Your truth is divinity. Your alignment, your connection, and and becoming one with that frequency as well. So, and then yeah, we go through all the tools of like being able to read different energies and getting a sense of what someone else's energy is versus your own <clears throat> feeling a thought entity versus divine wisdom or guidance or your higher self. Um, yeah. So it's learning how to read energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
understanding the differences in in types of energy and where it's coming from. And you can't do that. Like, well, you can, but it's going to be a bit fuzzy if you've got all your stuff getting in the way. And it's sort of like interferences, low lower emotions or um, dense energies. This They show up in the energy body like uh, almost like black or, or um, grey cloudy energy. Sometimes it can come up as like thick black tar. But all of that is interfering. Like you've got no clarity through those types of frequencies. So you want to clear, 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 clear so that you've got like it's it's like really when you look at water, you want the water to be still. So um, that's what we're going for. When you can clear all of that out and then you find the truth of who you are and you come into your alignment, into your clarity, everything just works without so much effort. <laughs> And the connection and the trust and it all just starts to come through. So it is a process and it has lots of different sort of moving pieces. Um, and again, I want to highlight there's no right or wrong way on how you move through this journey. It is just show up, just start doing stuff. Doesn't Again, there's no right or wrong in what you do. Just do something and connect into you and have fun and play. That's a really big piece of the puzzle that we talk about in Intuitive View is creating the space to just play to learn without expectation or pressure um and more will come through so that's another really important piece um so we've got crystal has got soul i'm ready to come through girl you're talking to <laughs> yeah cool that's nice um yeah so have we got any other questions any other any um yeah anything any thoughts that people want to put out um, even if it's just for a chat around um, our growth and no. <laughs> we might even do a little clearing. What if we do that? I know in the last, um, yeah, lead us through an exercise. I think we will. Cynthia's solar plexus needs some solar. <laughs> Um, in the last live q and I really rushed through a bit of a breathing exercise at the end there. So I might even, we'll do a little bit of a clearing and then we'll do some breath work through our chakras, um, which you can do. And again, I think I said it there, if, you, if you've joined us again from the last one, I'll repeat the message. Um, you can do this with all of your chakras and we'll do the, the Ajna, third eye and the solar plexus for Cynthia today. Um how to deal with others, energy you don't want. Yeah. And will you clarify when class starts, process, ritual? Yep. Cool. We'll definitely come to that. Um, yeah. So we'll do, I might, we might do that. I'll do a little clearing and then we'll do the breath work. I just want to touch on Jan's, um, how to deal with others, energy you don't want. Yeah. We, we definitely cover that in Intuitive You and um, our boundaries and how to get clearer and stronger in our boundaries and our energy and being able to decipher who's another's energy and our energy, what to do with that, how to clear out our energy of other people and other influences or the room that you're in. Um, we, we do cover all of that as well. Um, and that energetic exchange that can show up, um, which comes up with a lot of empaths. Um, so we do talk about that the lack of boundaries and the bleeding of energy with empaths. Um, and I think there's a real conditioning that's come through um, for empaths to believe that, you know, that's just normal. It's not normal. <laughs> it shouldn't be like you are constantly under the weight of energy. Like, is, like you're in a sea of energy and you're just getting thrown around like a dirty cloth because you're picking up on everybody else's stuff. And that is not how you should be operating as an empath and that is not why you're here so um getting really clear in those boundaries and cleaning up your energy and taking responsibility for your energy and your boundaries and being more protective of that energy again being responsible for our energetic hygiene and what we will and won't accept um and in that process you actually learn how to become um you can learn how to use your empathic um abilities your your just your whole empathic makeup to show up better, clearer, stronger, more helpful. Um, but it's yeah, getting really clear on those boundaries first and what you will and won't accept. And 
Um, I mean, now my body is sort of like, it's just a communication tool. When I'm in a, in a session and I'm working on someone, my body is literally used as a communication tool with divine. So we talk about that as well. And um, yeah. So, um, all right, we might do a little clearing. Oh, yeah, before, okay, so before everyone, if you're all blissed out or in a little bubble by the end of the clearing and exercise, we'll just cover the details of the class. So um, for Americans, it starts Saturday, October the 12th, and for Australians, it starts Sunday the 13th of October. So I think um, in Australia it's 7 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and for... Americans, I might need Cynthia to jump in. I can't remember seven, seven, it might be your five, I think. I think it's your 5 p.m. Um, but I can't remember if that 4 p.m. Eastern time. There you go. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, yeah, so that's a Saturday afternoon for you, and the class goes for three hours. Um, and it goes for six weeks, so it's consecutive, six consecutive weeks at the same time. Um, there is the replay, which I believe will be available in your membership um, for you to access at any time. You can repeat it as often as you want to. Um, I know a lot of past students have repeated the clearings several times um, and, and that's great and you should. I highly recommend doing that because each time you repeat, it just clears it a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and that's um, that's the consistency. So, and the replays are great. I mean, how cost effective? <laughs> you don't have to keep paying for a session every time you want a clearing, but you can keep going deeper and deeper through that journey. Um, yeah, so the replays are great. What else was there? Is there another question around um, the process, the schedule? You get a workbook with every class as well. So I think that's sent out to you. Um, I'm sure if it's the week before or a few days before the class. So I would um, strongly encourage you to have a read of the workbook. There might be things in there that you understand and or maybe not. Um, it is a, it's a resource for you to have post-class that allows you to go deeper into the teachings and gives you everything that we talk about in written format for you to reference. Um, to be honest, I've jam-packed it so much. I've probably... <laughs> probably in all honesty put too much in there because we don't actually get to everything in the class I do try to I do my very best um and I think there was a couple of classes last the last intuitive view where we just couldn't do all of the activities because there was just so much in there so um it's just it's full of too much goodness <laughs> if that's a thing um but what it does mean is that there's more for you to play with beyond the class um so that's the upside um, what else? Yeah, so three hours weekly for six weeks, beginning October 12th and 13th. And, um, yeah, I think that's probably all the details, unless there's any other class questions on the course. Um, it's really up to you in how much you show up in the course. Like, um, or is the book sent mail or electronic? No, it's email. It'll be emailed to you. So, um, I, if I, yeah, I, if, for me, I would always download and print it. You can do the same thing if you want to print the workbook. Otherwise, it's just emailed out to you. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. How much you show up totally up to you. So I know that there's some people who um, we've had a mix, be comfortable with, talking a lot in class and others who are a little bit more shy or reserved in class. Um, but what I find is everyone sort of finds their way um, and becomes a lot more comfortable because it is quite a vulnerable space and um, it, it really is about creating safety for everybody as they lean into that learning experience, um, which I've, you know, only had amazing feedback on in how that's felt in the way that they can show up. So um, everyone, it all needs are catered for, um, but it's really your choice in how much you want to contribute, share, um, you know, it's your choice. You don't have to, you don't have to 
contribute to get the most out of the course. Um, you can do the replays if you can't. I know a couple of people have said that they, there may be one or two classes that they can't get to per, like in person. Um, would that take away from the course? No, it won't. Um, of course, the preference is always that you're there in person because you will be able to um, contribute if you want to, like ask questions and it's very interactive in that way. So I would say don't miss out on that. Um, but if you can't get to one or two classes, then um, you will get the replay and you'll still get the clearings and um, it's not a deal breaker. If you not, if you like, if it's going to be more than three, <laughs> it's going to be more than three classes that you can't get to. I'm like, well, maybe you should wait until the next one if you want to do it in person. If that's not important for you and you really just want the replays, then it doesn't matter. Um, either way, you're going to gain from the course. It really is about the experience that you want and how much you would like to participate. Um, you don't have to have your screen on as well um, as long as when you do, like, um, it is important, again, for that safety piece. Um, with the class interaction, because there is activities that we do, um, it is, it's important if you're showing up and you're contributing to someone else's experience that you, that you really come, like if that makes sense. I think we've only had it once where someone sort of got triggered and then just vanished and that left the other person sort of hanging. So, you know, that person had the rest of the class plus me to support them, but, um, you know, we were supportive of the person that got triggered and it was just the, it was like within themselves they got triggered, <laughs> which is normal and it happens and so we hold space for that. But, um, but yeah, just, that's the only thing I would say, if you're, if you're not comfortable in really showing up, be aware of that, that you will, you go into little pods. So we do breakout rooms and you and another person, and it's so much fun. And I really promise you <laughs> it's a safe space. Um, and there is no expectation, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, I'm not going to get anything or I can't get anything. And they're actually really surprised or oh, I've had students who are like it doesn't work it doesn't work my, my no, I don't see anything I don't feel anything and then they come back with feedback and they just nailed it like so they're projecting onto how they think they should receive information but their skill is over here so it's about understanding how you work how you're showing up how you're receiving information and honing into that and the other skills will develop so if you're really wanting sight but your biggest um your biggest um, Claire is hearing or feeling um, and you're really focused on the site, then I would say maybe shift your energy over to where you are receiving information and allow that to sort of carve the path for the rest of it. Because one, it's going to help you feel like, oh, okay, I can do this. I'm doing it. It's happening. All the information is coming through and it just creates more space for openness and flow. And um, yeah, it'll, it'll all start to come together. Um, all right, so we've got a few minutes left. We might just jump into the activity. So just get comfortable wherever you're sitting. And allow your breath to deepen. So breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. And just allow your body to get comfortable. Shake it up. Release any tension, any tightness in your body. As you inhale, allow your belly to really fill out. Breathe into your belly. Feel it rise on the inhalation. And then as you breathe out through the mouth, feel your belly fall on the exhalation. And just slow it right down. Just stay with that breath cycle. And I'm going to bring in the white wave. Bring in the whole group. into the white flame. Bringing in the light of flame, the light of God, where it will be. Just bring that into the earth and spin that light out. Just bring in a little bit more. And we've just got some energy that's opening up there, so the whole thing. Excuse me. Mm. 
Very good. All right, so just bring your awareness now behind your eyes, coming in behind your eyes. And as you breathe, I want you to um, visualize or sense the root of your ajna from the center of your head. And it's like a thin line that then expands out into a bit of a funnel. So I want you to use your breath, just practice. And I only want you to breathe out through the chakra, just breathing from the behind your eyes from the root through the chakra. So breathing out very gently. And you can use the white flame or you can use a violet flame to just breathe through that centre. I'm just going to bring in more, more, sorry, more light. I'm just spinning that out. Okay, so I'm just going to And as you breathe out, I want you to visualize sense where you can even command gently open the root of my ajna and just feel it's almost like a little stretch. It just opens very gently. I'm going to bring the white flame all dense, dirty, negative, toxic, low vibrational energy through the arch. Now release, 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 release. All cause attachments and addictions to fear through the arch and chakra. Release, 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 release. In mobile contracts of thousand agreements of fees through the Arjuna release, 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 release. Now, without uh, projecting anything into the chakra, I just want you to feel it like a clear window that's open, just clarity. You can visualize or sense like the blue sky, just openness, unlimited openness. Each chakra actually, it's its own universe in and of itself. And you might see the night sky. You might actually visualize or sense your Ajna as an entire universe and just feel into the openness and expansion, the unlimitedness within your Ajna. Very good. Okay, now we're going to bring our awareness to our solar plexus. And in intuitive view, we do actually discuss how all the chakras are connected and how they affect each other. So bringing your awareness to your solar plexus. Now your solar plexus actually sits just beyond your diaphragm. So if that's my diaphragm here my solar plexus is going to sit around here it's above the belly button so bringing your awareness to your to your solar plexus and staying near that central column of light i want you to be at the root at the very so if your central of column of light is here running through the center of your being the root of the um, solar plexus comes out of that so it actually it's like this and it comes out like that and you've got the front and then you've got the back coming out like that. So for today, we're just going to work on the front chakra. So I want your awareness to be here within the central column of light coming out through the chakra that way. And again, as you bring your awareness, it's almost like you're looking out through that part of your being. So you're bringing all of your awareness into your solar plexus. Don't worry about the right and wrong of doing this. Just It's just your intention and your awareness just dropping in. And with your breath breathing through that root of the solar plexus, this one is actually uh, a lot more congested. So I'm going to bring in the white flame, electric bubble flame, and brighter, 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 breaking down, disintegrate, eliminate, expel all dirty, congested, contaminated, all over, brush, and reveal dirty red energy through the solar, one solar plexus. And just use your breath to really gently blow very gently through the solar plexus and out.
including all discards and all entities connected into the loop of emotional energy, the few ghost energy and lower emotional energy through the soul plexus disintegrate or make spell. I'm going to bring the black loop back in the corner. There we go. including all cause attachments and addictions to fear on low vibrational lower end emotions. Release, release, release. Including all entities, all thought entities, elemental, release, release, release. I'm just going to bring in more of that beautiful soft yellow through the solar plexus and I'm going to bring in a little bit of blue, normalize, balance, stabilize, harmonize. Strength and normalize, balance, stabilize, harmonize with the blue. Okay, so when you're ready, just bringing your awareness through your whole body, through your feet, through your base. And then just sending a beam of light out through your base into Mother Earth, connecting into the trees, the roots. Okay, so just separating the group, everybody going back to themselves. And just bring your awareness back behind your eyes. Feeling back into your body. How is everybody feeling? What was that like as an experience? Did you feel anything? Did you feel nothing? That's totally okay too. Any last questions? We are going to wrap up in a minute. So any um, any questions you want to throw out there before we finish up? That was good. Amazing. That was great. Cool. Everyone's feeling something. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming along. Where is the Ajna? I've never heard before. <clears throat> the the Ajna. Okay, what is the Ajna? <laughs> right, right eye. Feeling good. Have cataract on the right eye. Still seeing. Yeah. So the Ajna is the um is another name for the third eye. The third eye is actually like a watered down version of what's really going on. Your psychic receptor is actually on your forehead. So that's your forehead chakra. And then you've got your Ajna here, which is um, your where you your lower perception. So this is where you process what you've received. So we go through all of that in the intuitive view as well. And it's... Um, it's just um, high teachings that have sort of been kept hidden, hidden teachings, let's call it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we go through like the actual, what are the actual pathways and how they connected. We look at the back head chakra. Um, you've got chakras everywhere. You've got temple chakras, eye chakras. You've got nostril chakras. You've got jaw, minor jaw. You've got your ears, all of them. So will we be learning more about this in the course? Absolutely. So um, I think I've shared before, like the first couple of modules, there's a lot of content to cover because we go through all of this and we go through how they're all connected. So we actually discuss like how your solar plexus affects what you're seeing and the filters that we're processing information through. Um, got on. Yeah, perfect. Looking forward to seeing you in class, Tom. Um, thank you for coming. Yeah, so um, there's a lot. There's a lot of information that we discuss and um, understanding how the chakras work and how to move them and um, to create clarity and get clear and we cover all of the good stuff. You will literally, it is, I'm not joking, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating when I say it is jam-packed of stuff that will stay with you for a long time um, and deepen your awareness of the truth of who you are and how you work and how you can show up and, um, and it's fun. It's really cool. It's a really fun space to be in and connect with. And everyone just connects like it's amazing, the connections that happen. Um, so, yeah, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me again today. And thank you for your um, beautiful comments and questions. And, um, you know, it really helps to have a really successful Q&A with the contributions. And so thank you. And I hope to see all of you in class. <laughs> and um, registration is still open. It's I think it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So get on it. Get on it. <laughs> Bye. See you all soon. Thank you again.